RuneScape is a game where there are many sources of items, from bossing to skilling to mini games, but nothing is more exciting than opening a treasure chest. From endgame chests everybody dreams of to forgotten chests that nobody knows, chests exist all throughout RuneScape. In this series, I aim to answer one simple question. Can you complete every raid in RuneScape with your only source of items being from chests? Last episode, we unlocked our best in slot amulet, moving us one step closer to completing our first raid. But for the amulet of the dam to shine, we need to use it with barrows. And to wear barrows, our stats need to look a hell of a lot better than this. So let's train through the most dangerous chest in the game and finally get ourselves some slayer levels. Now, we already have an assignment. We chose not to do this before because mammoths are very annoying at our levels. They have a max hit of seven and high health, but they don't have any defense bonuses, so we can basically use any style that we want to. With 130 health, that does mean 130 juicy Slayer experience per kill, which is gonna let Slayer fly. I wanna level up range a little bit, and this seems to be our current best in slot range gear, so let's go and see how it hits. These burn bolts do take a long time to get, so we're only going to take 800 for now just in case a PKO shows up. I have just noticed we have a severe lack of food though, so let's go and sort that out first. 55 cooking, let's get back to Wildy Slayer. After last episode, we're 77 combat now, so we have to be really careful of PKers. Safe spotting these should be pretty easy with all the trees. We do once again have the annoying fact that we cannot get any Avers device on this account, meaning we've got to pick up all of our bolts manually. On the bright side, range does seem to be pretty accurate in this setup, so 40 should not take long at all. As you already know, on this Wilderness Slayer journey, we can only pick up chest related items such as keys and clues meaning even this looting bag on the floor is off limits. But I will talk a little bit about interesting drops in general because wilderness monsters are very, very cool. Mammoths, for example, don't particularly have anything special. It's mainly just herbs and low level seeds. But for low level Iron Man, there's one drop that could come in handy, a prayer potion one dose. For us though, we have to wait for the juicy Laren's key drop, which has an increased drop rate based on the monster's combat level. Mammoths, for example, are level 80, putting them in the perfect middle ground for Laren's keys at a 1 in 100 drop rate. There are some ways to improve this drop rate at some places, but we'll go over those a little later on. And that's our first range level that we've had for a long, long time. These Slayer levels are flying in. At 130 XP a Mammoth, it's still only 2 per level right now. We have a long way to go until this is useful though, because our first wilderness monster on the Slayer list is actually Bloodvelds, so we need at least 50 Slayer to benefit from any unlocks. Okay, that's 40 range. We can now wear the green D-Eyed that we got last episode, but I did use nearly 300 bolts in just 21 mammoths. Honestly, I think I need to save these for things I'm forced to range or to train efficiently later. So let's transition to melee and get base 70 melee stats so we can wear that Barrow's armor. I'm just checking that I've got duplicates of like everything that I'm going to lose and for some reason handboots protect over Addy Square and I've only got one of them. So I think I'm going to have to drop the boots. I don't even have any different boots but oh well I guess we're going barefoot or whatever these are. Socks? These don't seem to hit too much on me and if we want to save food we're right next to Ferox on this task so there's no reason not to melee them at all. We'll nab 60 attack first and slowly push through these barrow stats and I just want some keys man. Oh, I didn't even consider that. These drop the rare drop table, which has half keys on it. We can actually grab these. And there's that prayer potion drop. I wish I could pick it up. Look at it just sitting there looking so drinkable. Wait, max it of 11? These don't drain straight. I was hitting 12s before. What? What? Where did my amulet go? So here we're running to another problem. I know of the Amulet of the Damned being lost on any death, even one life within the Tombs of a Mascot Raid itself, for example. But it turns out it has a secondary problem. It also degrades, just like Barrow's gear, and then crumbles into nothing, which means I can't use it for long tasks such as training. Luckily though, if you want to take a long task like backend development and make that long training fun, then today's video sponsor Boot.dev will be perfect for you. Boot.dev is a learning tool to help you master backend development using the Python and Go programming languages. I say learning tool because this is not a simple programming tutorial. This is a fully integrated website that tackles the hardest problem with traditional e-learning, boredom. 
As a full-time developer myself, making healthcare software, video games, and Runelite plugins, I genuinely wish I had something like boot.dev when I was first learning code. It fully gamifies the experience, making it easily digestible while motivating you with rewards and quests, so it feels like a captivating RPG game. With a live compilation tool and a hands-on approach, this is definitely a great way to get started. There's even a dedicated Discord server available for peer-to-peer -peer help if you ever need that little bit of extra support. If you've got any interest in programming at all, this is a great way to start. Not only are most programming jobs these days fully work from home, but according to Stack Overflow, the median salary for back-end developers in the US was around $100,000 in 2023. And for the UK people out there, using my own experience of four years as a full-stack developer to go off, I'm currently getting offers in the £60,000 range. If you want to gamify your learning, earn experience, gain achievements and complete quests to get the top spots on the leaderboard, click the link in my description box and use my code TELECON to get 25% off your first payment. And yep, that even includes the yearly plan. Thanks to boot.dev for sponsoring today's video. Oh, but on the bright side, there's our first Laren's key. We can finally open the most dangerous chest in RuneScape. I am going to bank this Laren's key because you always lose it on death, so I'd rather keep it safe. It's a shame we wasted one of the amulets, but at least we found out early, and we've got the amulet of strength to fall back on, so we should be fine. Beautiful, look at it. We actually got another one before the task ended. Eight kills to go. And there is the first wilderness task completed. Slayer points are going to be very, very useful, but we won't obtain any until our fifth slayer task. We managed to get all the way up to 31 slayer. That is insane. I don't want to wait any longer, so let's go and open our first two Laren's keys. Now, there are two Laren's chests in the wilderness, one in really deep world here and one about halfway through. They both share basically the exact same drop table, but this one up here drops higher quantities and can drop Dagon High Armor, which is a really, really good mage set. And until we get our arms or Ancestral, it's probably our best in slot gear. The Laren's chest also has many other items useful to us, including Rune Armor, which would be a solid upgrade. Let's see what we get. Number one... Pure Essence. This is actually incredibly useful. Collecting elemental runes from the Dorgushing chest is very, very time consuming. And as we have every elemental talisman from that same chest, this is going to be super helpful in the future. And then some dragon arrow tips. Not so useful. I'm not even sure we're ever going to get to use these. Second task, bandits. These shouldn't be too difficult. Well, I tried killing the level 130s and it's just not worth it. There are some named NPCs like our boy Speedy Keith over here. I wonder if these count for the Slayer task. Okay, okay, genius idea. I'm gonna lock all of the level 130s into these houses so we can have a chilled out Slayer task. This is more like it. There we go, surrounded by 22s. You'd think one of these bandits would learn how doorknobs work, wouldn't you? <laughs> and here I were thinking we weren't gonna get anything we can pick up on this task. A medium clue, and it's doable. We will try this after these last 27. The Laren's key is not looking so hot from here. Ooh, our first Wilderness Slayer casket. Oh, shame, but we did get some cool fashion scape. Ish. Skeletons, nice and easy. Well, I'm lucky that didn't land on my head. Jesus Christ. And while I'm here avoiding meat ears, I just want to announce that I've quit my job. Yep, content creation has all of my attention now. Thank everyone so much for the support. Genuinely, I could not do this passion without you guys. I'm going to be uploading far more frequently, so if you're not subscribed, please do hit the button. It's the perfect time to do so, and it helps a lot. I also opened up channel memberships for those interested, and click my link in the description to join my Discord so we can have an awesome community. This year will be a good one. Skeletons completed. Mammoths again. Again, Jesus. Well, we did get two Laren's keys last time. Eight mammoths left and we've hit one. Gimme. Come on, Chrissy. Give me a good task. Bandits. Are we just going back and forth here? And there is the fifth Slayer task completed, getting us 25 points. Unfortunately, 25 points is not enough to cancel a task. You need 30 points. So we need this task to be good. But after that, we can cancel anything that we don't like. Zombies, absolutely perfect. This is another task we're probably not going to get a Laren's key from. Because they're so low combat level, some are 24, some are 18. The drop rate is like 1 in 1,200 or so, so the chance of hitting one is very, very slim. There is something interesting though. Zombies are one of the NPCs in the game that drops zombie champion scrolls, and zombie champion scrolls are something that we can actually use. The XP gain from the champions challenge actually comes from a chest, so if we want to grind out these scrolls, we can. 
but unfortunately the cape does not come from the chest so we'd essentially be doing it for nothing oh here's another fun fact you see how they drop this dark fishing bait that's only on members worlds on non-members worlds they drop regular fishing bait and what is fishing bait well if you look closely at the inventory slot fishing bait is actually maggots and what are these dead humans so it's just maggots eating away at a corpse that is such a cool detail ice warriors Ooh. We're gonna need some more food for this one. We've got 377 pizzas to cook, and these are probably gonna be the last pizzas on the account. You'll see why a little bit later. I'm gonna miss you, Remy. Now we've got all those pizzas cooked, it's time to move on to Ice Warriors. Now these are located in the northwest of the wilderness, really, really deep, and it's around two PK in hotspots, the King Black Dragon and the Chaos Altar. So this might be the first task that we actually see some PKs. They don't really drop too much, nor can I think of any cool facts to them. So did you know they're made of ice? Wow. Let's hope we don't get chucked into a team of PKs. Oh, perfect. First try. That's awesome. These are level 57, so much lower than mammoths, but they can still hit sixes. So these might eat up a lot of our food. I'm going to see a lot of these, Anna. Oh my God. And there is 60 attack. That's huge, we can now wield dragon, and we can get some dragon weaponry, and we're able to do some of the quests that they require. But considering we're going to Barrow soon, we might not get any in time. Now we're going to train strength all the way up to 70, which is going to be our first level that actually allows Barrow's weapons. This is going to be huge. Oh, I said they didn't drop anything interesting, but that is a drop I wish I could pick up. Oh boy, now this is a task. I'm not sure what to do here. Revenants cost 100,000 GP just to enter the cave. And if you die, you lose that money and you've got to repay it. So this is a much more complex task than you'd expect. First things first, we can't actually afford the entrance fee to get into the rev caves. We still need 23k. So I think the best thing to do is that's exactly what we saved these from the Dorgish Kong chests for. Because these alk for a decent value. The only downside is we've currently only got access to low level alchemy because we've only got 35 magic. Each one of these is still giving 800 GP, which is absolutely huge. So we should hit this 100k in no time. And there is the first 100,000 GP on our account. Shame it's all going to get wasted in one click. And here we go, paying 100,000 GP to enter the caves. If we die, that 100,000 GP is gone. And let me tell you, this place is very, very scary. In fact, killing these imps brings back some lovely memories. Even on imps, the healing can be pretty annoying if it happens at bad times. For example, has Yukas tried attacking me? Ooh, I've got to be careful here. I've still got 57 left. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. I know he's attacking this other guy, but he's going to come on to me, I bet. Oh, that's scary. That was a level 87 PK. What if it comes back? Final kill and we got nada. Oh, I love these things. I spent so much time here as a kid. Man, it's a shame I can't pick up all the juicy herbs that they're well known for. And our 10th Slayer task, magic axes. There's actually someone in here? No way. The one place I didn't think I'd be packed is this. That's like five worlds without one being free. What is going on? Iron Battle Axe. Iron Battle Axe. And believe it or not, another Iron Battle Axe. <laughs> and that just about sums up this place. Wait, there are chests here. What are these? Oh, are these just 10 GP chests from Ardoon? I think they are. I think this is just another place to ha get the 10 GP chests. That's sick. Task completed. And as you can see, every 10 Slayer tasks, we do get five times the points. Given us 250, when we unlock stuff like Bloodvelds and Jellies that have superior variants, we're probably going to use these to extend them as well as unlock superior Slayer. Ooh, these are going to be interesting. And this is a first time entering the Wilderness Slayer Cave. I am scared. The Wilderness Slayer Cave is a scary place. It's the exclusive home of most of the Slayer monsters in the wilderness, making it a PKing hotspot, and rightly so. But the main problem is it's a multi-combat area, meaning multiple players can attack me at once. Normally, I'd be fast on my feet with a quick teleport to get away, but almost all of the cave is above level 20 wilderness, meaning we cannot teleport from most of these tasks without going on a little bit of a run, making escape almost impossible. Luckily though, Ankus are right on the cusp, meaning this should be a fairly safe task. In multi-combat, I feel like these Ankus are going to absolutely wreck me, even though this one's not hitting too much. 
So I'm going to try and keep one isolated just so that I can keep killing that one until the aggro timer comes down. Ankus don't attack two ticks. They just, uh, you know, sat under each other. Turns out Ankus hit quite a bit, so we kind of need to use prayer here. Ooh, our first hard clue. And we can't do it because it's prayer. Oh, I really hope we get another one of these. Completing a hard clue would be so good. Imagine this Chad walking around with some third age. We've actually seen quite a few PKs, but all of them have been over 100 combat, so none have been able to attack me. But it did make me think, and this spot is the best place to kill them. They get in a line, so only one can attack you at once. And if people come to attack you, they'll literally have to run up these stairs. So I can just simply teleport away because we're under level 20 wilderness. This is not a bad Slayer task at all. Oh my god, he's just walked straight past me. And there's 45 Slayer. Just five more levels till we can kill our first wilderness creature. Oh boy, a Laren's key. Oh my god, and a tooth half. This task's so good, I've killed like 10 of them. Oh, did you see that? He's just tried smacking me. Wait, oh my god, wait, 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 he can hit me. It's up to 117. Holy crap, has he got PK skull prevention on? No way. Oh, it was singles. I'm dumb. I am so dumb. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's getting dangerous now. I should really bank this key, but I've only got like 10 left, so I think we take the risk. Task completed, and we came out unscathed. Oh, no. First kill. I literally just got here. I'm done. In multi, I cannot do anything. <laughs> well, there is the first death of the episode, and that is exactly why this is the most dangerous chest in RuneScape. Okay, that's probably going to be too hard of a task for me to do for now. I couldn't even hit them properly anyway, so let's use our first cancel. Much better. Oh my god, from a skeleton? This is literally a 1 in 1,144 key. This is going to give me something good. I can feel it. Ooh, and one from a bandit. This is going well. And here comes one of the most important levels on the account. 70 strength, meaning we can now wield a barrow's equipment. Or some of it. We still need 70 attack. And there's 37 magic. We can finally do this. Oh, that feels good, man. Ooh, first wilderness medium casket. Oh, not great, unfortunately. And there is another one of those beautiful task streaks, taking us to 420 Slayer points. And this rogue marks a very important milestone, 50 Slayer. We can now kill Bloodvelds, which are our first actual Slayer creature in the wilderness. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, Chaos Elemental, what the hell? I did not know it could attack through that gate. Fuck off. Jesus. That's annoying. And with that Slayer task completed, we are going to be out of food soon. These are our last pizzas. And I mentioned earlier that we're not going to be making any more pizzas on the account. And that is because of these chests right here. Unfortunately, we do need 84 thieving to open them. So let's go get that real quick. Number one. And a little while later, number two. We can now thieve rogues chests at the rogues castle. Now we do have a little bit of an issue. As you can see, these high level rogues are not aggressive, but the moment we open this chest, all of them will get on us and it's a multi-combat area. Normally you bring prayer pots and you can just protect from melee and you deal with everything and it's fine. It's not that simple with us because we don't have any prayer pots. So I either need to flick or set them up in a way that I can flick and loot as much as I can. I mentioned earlier that we won't need any more pizza, and that's because these have three food drops. They drop 15 raw tuna at a 6.6 .6 drop rate, 20 pike cooked at a 1 in 66, and 10 cooked shark at a 1 in 66 also, giving us a lot of food. Like with all the other old chests in the game, these have two options, open and search for traps. If we click open, we're going to be damaged for like 20 damage, so we need to not do that. So we're going to swap the left click to search for traps, and we're never going to have to deal with that issue. Anyway, let's start. If I pray melee and loot one of these chests, as you can see, they're all going to aggro onto me. Watch this. Oh dear. On the bright side, we got 15 raw tuna straight away. I believe there is a way to safe spot these rogues by de-spearing them into the castle on loads of accounts, but I don't think we're going to do that, unfortunately. 
On the bright side, we have set it up so only one rogue's on us. So theoretically, this shouldn't be that much damage. We are already 24 prayer points down though. I have just brought all the rogues around here because they aggro you for quite a while. I wonder if I go around the other side of the building now, if I can actually just loot the chests. Let's find out. Okay, the rugs can't actually come indoors. That kind of sucks for my plan. Uh, what if we bring them around this side of the castle? Okay, we might be onto something. All these rugs are still down there. Some of the level 135s are down here. And I can just kind of sit here and loot this chest freely now. We have got four prayer points left in case anything goes wrong. And this one over here can still wonder. But for now, I guess we're on. This is so weird. The rugs stay aggroed onto you, but they just can't come into any build instruction no matter what I do. Very, very, very strange indeed. And that's all we're going to get for now. Not bad. We actually got 90 tuna in our first inventory and we only used like eight pizzas. So that is a win. I'm currently using my main to try and safe spot all the rugs. As you can see, this one still, this one still. There's one in here. There's one in here. And I'm trying to get one in here right now. And then I've just got to deal with the other ones. I guess for these ones on the main, I can just kind of sit here and stop them. So if I loot this chest now, can these actually get to me? They can't. Well, that's cool. Until they reset, if they do, we've got a chest that we can loot every 10 or so seconds and then get some juicy loot. Let's keep this up. Some of them have respawned out of their safe spots. Let's hope this can't see me. Okay, for now, I am good. Ooh, and there's our first sharks on the account. 10 of them at a time. This is going to be awesome when we get into some late game bossing. And those are some very interesting items. Two dragon stones. This is one of the only places we can get these. It feels nice looting a chest that I've not got to world hop on. And that's it for now. Not a bad haul at all. Now we've just got to get back safely. It feels so good having shark in the bank, man. We got 360 raw tuna in no time at all. These do heal less than pizza because they only heal 10. But with how quick they are to get, it's absolutely fine. Let's go cook these. Ents. Oh, this is a little bit of a weird one, but believe it or not, this is where we use our block. Ents are the only thing on Crystalia's entire list that, believe it or not, do not drop Laren's keys. According to Mod Ash, looting bags and Laren's keys are not on the Ents drop table because they're tied into the generic NPC death code, which Ents don't have because you cut them to get their loot. It is then a little bit weird that Slayer enchantments are there, but apparently they're separate to the death code and they were plugged into Ents, so absolutely fine just means that we can't kill them. So I've just finished an Ice Warriors task and I've got a clue here that needs a ring of forging. We already have the steel kite and the green DI chaps. Now I'm going to show you something really interesting. We already have a ruby ring in the bank, but we can't enchant it yet because you need 49 magic. However, what you can do is if you use the ring on this guy over here, he'll actually enchant it for you for 250 GP. So now we've got a ring of forging. The more you know. Then I went on a little bit of a detour to play some Castle Wars with friends and something amazing happened. Holy shit! Guys, oh my, so my god, you guys are so lucky. I genuinely need this. I don't think you understand. <laughs> oh! I can... uh, yeah, I, I don't understand. <laughs> I, can, I can truthfully say, yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about. Hannah, were you cyberbullying everyone or just me? I was cyberbullying everyone. Oh my god, we actually got the second Leo random while we're recording a video with Josh and everyone. What the hell? I am so happy that is two out of eight. We've now got the emote. Oh no. Ooh. Jesus, I didn't think I'd see anyone there, especially with three left. Still no Bloodveld task, but this kill gets us 52 Slayer, meaning we get a second wilderness task, Jellies. Now, these are actually going to be the bread and butter because they exist in the Wilderness Cave. So we get the Laren's Key drop buff and we get the Superior buff. Man, I was looking to extend jellies and they're actually not on the list. Bloodfelds are, but we do have a little bit of a problem with these that we'll describe later. From an Earth Warrior, yoink. Oh my god, we got an Earth Warrior Champion Scroll. These are a 1 in 5k drop rate and funnily enough, we can actually pick these up. That's wild. Maybe we could go for this at some point. Five more to go. Oh my god, and there we go. It's took till 54 Slayer to get our first task of jellies. Now, we've still not got Bloodvelds, but these are the much better option. So the first thing we need to do is unlock bigger and badder to get superior monsters. Oh, I'm scared being back in this place. 
To get to jellies, we do face the obstacle of green dragons, which can hit a lot with the dragon fire. So hopefully we can just pray melee and run through here without too much trouble. Okay, cool. In multi, that is really, really scary. And here we are at the slimy blobs of death. Now, if you've noticed, I have changed my gear setup, and that's because jellies actually attack with magical melee, meaning it does roll off your magic defense. With our previous armor, this was in the negative, so they would have hit very accurately. But with this armor, they're probably still going to hit accurately, but much, much less than they would normally. Oh, and there's a Laren's key already. We didn't even need a superior. I'm not going to lie. I am incredibly scared in here. We've like died every time we've been in. So I am going to bank these keys as we get them. Assuming that we get any more. Oh yeah, jellies are really good for hard clues as well. Let's see if we can do this one. This is really doable. Okay, we're going to do this after this trip. Having access to a decent way to get hard clues is awesome. Any rune armor is an upgrade right now. Oh, how that is taunting me. And here's the first hard clue step ever completed on the account. And also the first hard clue dropped. Oh, baby, number two. Number three, this is our best task yet. That one in 73 drop rate is really coming in clutch, even without superiors. Oh my god, with three left, we actually got it. We got a superior. This is a guaranteed Laren's key, which means we're going to be having four this task, and we hit it right at the end. I am so happy. Some superiors have buffed mechanics. Some have additional ways to deal damage. This one is just kind of prey melee, and you're not going to get hit. It's just an oversized jelly. And four minutes later, there's the jelly down. 1900 experience and the guaranteed key beautiful and there is task completed what a beautiful task that brings us up to nine keys i was going to save all these till the end of the episode but that task trait as well so let's go and open the four that we got from jellies right now we got here safely let's see if we can get some good loot number one room plate legs oh that is a huge huge upgrade can we get a body as oh we can't wear the body iron ore that's a lot of iron my, holy how much is that uh, they're cheaper now but jesus we're not going to be using them for a long long time and finally dragon dart tips again not for a long time that's some really really good loot though let's hope we can get back without dying one of the main reasons for picking wilderness slayer this episode was for the rune armor for the huge upgrades and we actually hit some not only one but we got two of them i am very very happy Oh, and here comes the problem task. Bloodvelds like jellies have superior Slayer variants, but they're only located in one place, the Wilderness God Wars Dungeon. And to go in there without dying, we're going to need one of every god item, a Saradermin, a Zamorak, a Bandos, and an Armadil. Let's see what we've got so far. Okay, so we've only got a Zamorak and an Armadil item. You need 60 prayer to wield the armadillo stall. We can literally only go in there with a Zamorak item. Okay, so to get in, you need 60 strength or 60 agility. We do have the strength level, so we can push past this boulder. And let's see how bad this is. Okay, we might be able to get away with this. This entire corner is just Zamorak and Bandos. Okay, there's one kill without anything else attacking me, so I think it is going to be possible and <laughs> a combat achievement. Now, I'm not sure on its respawn rate, though, but there are other Bloodvelds like this that I could theoretically run up and just hit, which will give me the contribution when it dies. So that's fine, too. This, this is doable. That avian sick can fuck off, though. Jesus. Okay, so I'm figuring stuff out. These are aggressive if I step to, like, this tile. But whenever I come all the way up to the northeast like this, they back off me. So I think I am really, really safe here. Because if I stand here, the aviancy doesn't come onto me either. So I just have to hop or wait for the Bloodvelds to come down here. If I wait long enough, I can also just wait for this situation. Where the Bloodvelds hit something and then I can just hit them for free. No prayer flicking, no food, baby. Oh, and there's a Laren's key. Now, I'm not sure if this is scarier than the Wilderness Slayer Caves, because I see a lot less people here. So I might hang on to this a little bit. And there's another key and collection log, the Echinemical key. Echinemical key, even. Unfortunately, we can't pick this up, because this does not open a chest. This just bypasses kill counts at God Wars Dungeon. Okay, now our bank. Jellies and Bloodvelds pay out, man. I'm so glad that I've been able to do this. Oh, baby. Right on cue. We've got seven left. 
Change that gear back and let's go test out these room plate legs. Four a tasks completed. Oh, and there's another skeletons. That's our second key from skeletons in 400 kills. That's actually really good. Oh shit, you love to see it. I think we've got two full crystal keys now. Maybe we will open these this episode. Oh my god, I have one food and a guy's on me. Where do I go? He's level 105. Can I just tank him down to the wildy? <laughs> I'm lucky that I've got all this rune armor on. Jesus Christ. Seven levels to go. I'm going to run out of run energy. Please. Oh, thank God. <laughs> oh, that was close. That was so close. Also, I just finished the task like that kill. Thank God. Feels like it's getting more and more dangerous the closer to the end of the episode I'm getting. Why, why did I do this? Well, I'm deep in now. <laughs> Eoink. And there is the big 70 attack. We can now wield a lot of items, but what we care about is the barrow's weaponry. With 70 attack and strength, we can wield every melee barrow's weapon. Now we just need two defense levels and we have everything we need from wielding a slayer so far. We've even still got 10 Laren's keys in the bank to open as soon as this is done. Number 11. Number 12 is looking good. Always the mammoths, man. Always the freaking mammoths. I ain't complaining. And that is probably the last Slayer level we're gonna see on this episode. 59 coming in. Oh, and right at the end with under 10,000 experience left, another Laren's Key. Mammoths have got us eight of these. Eight of all of the Laren's Keys have come from mammoths. This is absolutely wild. And there we go. That hit marks 70 defense and 87 combat. We can now wear all of the melee Barrows Brothers stuff and we've got the defense for every piece of Barrows equipment. I am happy. We can now wear this Guthans Elm, but we've still got one more thing to do. We have to go and open all of these juicy Laren's keys. We've arrived safely. Let's see what we can get. Room plate bodies. That's huge. I do still have to do Dragon Slayer to wear them, but they are so good. Pure Essence is also good. We went through that earlier. What? Whoa. Okay, that pays back Revenants fully. That is insane. More room plates? Oh, dude, I've got to get this back. I have to get this back without dying. That is so much money in Alks. And the coins? We need this. And we made it back. Beautiful. Look at the cash stack. You know what? Let's end on a banger. We're going to take all nine keys, which means if anyone kills us, they're getting 1.3 million GP. Wish me luck. Okay, let's go. We're hoping for steel bars at this point, I think. Torstal is going to be almost impossible to use. Coal is sick. More pure essence is also good. More room play. Jesus, what the hell is with these bodies? Oh, and there's the full elms. We need that so much. Oh, 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 let's get out of here. Oh my God. We just got a Dagon High rope top. Oh my God, we can't even wear it yet, but Jesus Christ. That is incredible. 25 magic attack. I, I need to get this back. I can't believe I've just hit that. And 427 raw swordfish. This is more important than you'll ever know. With the recent updates to the wilderness... The raw tuna drop and the shark drop have been taken off the rogue's chest table. So this is absolutely insane. Please no PKers. Oh my god. And we are back. We've made it. Look at this loot. Well, you know what they say. Take risks, get rewarded. We took nine keys out and got ourselves a piece of Dagon High. Arguably the best one as well. We've got all the melee stats we could ever need for raids. We can now equip the Guthans Helm. And now we just need to get raid ready. See you next time.